Hey. How are you? You doing okay? Oh, man. I'm going to take a seat. <laughs> We're, uh... It's uh, an experimental episode of Radio Ridley Radio. I'm on a bunch of edibles. We're coming to you live from a forest in Portland, Oregon. We're not in Austin, Texas. It's uh, 7.38 Pacific Standard Time. And I'm on like 50 milligrams of edibles right now, dude. I'm completely... I've just been keeping an edible streak the whole time we've been here. Dude... Taylor, getting here was pretty rough, brother. Yeah. I lived in an airport for like a week and a half. That was pretty brutal. Like I I think I've I think I've mastered the art of sleeping in public spaces. Like your boy was just at the San Francisco airport like <laughs> Thank you for giving me. I ran into you in the airport. And you were supposed to arrive to Portland later. I was supposed to get to Portland at 11.45 a.m. I, I woke up to go to the Austin airport at 3 a.m. yesterday. And then I sat in the terminal for two hours. And my flight was supposed to be at 6 and it got delayed. And I wasn't going to get there until like 7.50. And my connecting flight boarded at like 7.45. So I got fucking absolutely screwed at the airport, dude. Yeah. I was living in that motherfucker, bro. Eating Swedish fish and drinking vitamin water. Like, just a steady diet of... I was becoming a feral human. (laughs) Of the airport. I was just in there like... Another delay. (laughs) Soon. (laughs) I'm just in hibernation in this... In San Francisco airport. I was... Just a feral Filipino in the San Francisco airport. All the normal Filipinos are like, "Hey, somebody should help him." Hey, uh, still waiting for my fucking flight. <laughs> Bing bong. Your flight's been delayed again. Go fuck yourself. Bing bong. I didn't get on a plane until 4 p.m. <laughs> I was at the San Francisco airport. At 3 a.m. No, I got I got to San Francisco. I think at like eight or nine. I can't remember. But I was there from, like, fucking 8.30 to 4 p.m., dude. I put a whole day's work at the fucking San Francisco airport, bro. I was clocked in that motherfucker, dude. We're outside. We're outside. Thank you for showing me your quaint little hometown, Taylor. Mm -hmm. Doesn't smell like... It doesn't smell like, uh... Doesn't smell like cow shit. I do appreciate the air quality in, in Portland. It's got good air quality. I'm in here... Taking some deep ass breaths. I might put some of this in a couple of mason jars and bring it home. Do you think that just, would work? Yeah, I'm just walking down six, like, oh man, it smells like horse shit down here. Let me just crack open some of this fresh Portland air I jarred while I was there. Just fucking jarred air. <laughs> Hell yeah, new merch for the podcast. Just jars of air of everywhere we've traveled. But it's literally <laughs> just me and Taylor <laughs> farting in it. People are like, oh, sick, this is... This is Iowa. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Iowa smells like shit. What were they eating in Iowa? Just That's so funny. God, bro. Texas needs to figure out this legal weed thing, man. I'm going off these weed beers, brother. They're tantalizing, bro. Mm-hmm. The weed beers are tantalizing. Got your boy geeking in Portland. People can't drive out here either. How many milligrams are you on right now? I think like 50 or 60. This is a dope pod. It's chill edible on the porch. My dad's house. Yeah, I ate a bunch of edibles were on Taylor's dad's porch. This place is fucking incredible, man. Oh, and we're going to do the Patreon in the hot tub. So yeah, yeah, we're going to chill in the hot tub, dude. Jabroni's out. And sign up for the Patreon, guys. Yeah, get the Patreon, dude. Fuck, bro. I had a rough-ass week. Last episode, we talked about that fight. Man, tell me why I ended up getting in a car accident later that week. And I got a phone call this morning. The truck is totaled. (laughs) Bing, bong, bing, (laughs) bong. Dude, I've had probably the roughest week of my fucking life, and I'm smiling, dude. I'm so happy. I'm so resilient. 
car accident, uh, a street fight, a car accident, and I was stuck in the airport for 12 hours yesterday. Bro, when is it going to end? But I'm still happy. I'm still resilient. Yeah. We're out here doing it. We're breaking. We're we're breaking new ground with yeah. our show. My Christian gym cell Instagram algorithm told me about this sanctuary that we went to. What was it? The sanctuary of the sorrowful mother. Yeah, at the. It was like a giant like. It was like a giant like botanical garden. Jesus botanical garden. There was just Jesus statues everywhere, and it was mad chill. And there's like a beautiful church at the end, and we went in there, and I fucking like. Dude, I was like full blown, like I could not say I was speechless, bro. I walk into this church and I'm speechless. Like the ceilings are painted and shit. I'm like, they can look on your Instagram for Jesus pictures. Christ, have, dude. Yeah, it was uh, laptop set up. Right we don't have a laptop set up to show you guys these pictures, but brother, let me tell you of my travels. I stared into the eyes of God, and He was looking at me through the colored pane glass. That shit, no homo, that shit made me cry, bro. I was in the church crying and shit. I couldn't say any words. All I could say was, oh, my God. Like, my Filipino brain could not fathom being inside of, like, such a holy place. I just, oh, Jesus Christ. Put that in the mouth, Jesus. Jesus. The blood of Jesus. I am baptized in the blood of, the blood of Jesus. I, I couldn't handle it, bro. My Filipino side came out. I was like, I want to bow my head to the king, the newborn king. Brother, my Filipino genetics would not allow me to not cry in that fucking church. We went up a video game elevator. Yeah. You go on this, you take this like, it's like an elevator on the edge of a cliff. And then it takes you up 200 feet in the air to like a separated plateau of Christianity. It's like a plateau of like botanical gardens and shrines and shit. They had a Filipino shrine there. San Lorenzo or whatever, mm. dude. I it felt a, I felt a, I felt a holy energy. Like I it, felt the power of Christ, and I wasn't even. Yeah, I'm a the, pa guy. the power of Christ was compelling me. I don't know. Something just dragged me there. I was like, dude, we should go. And Taylor and Sarah are with me, and they've lived here their whole lives. They're like, we've never been here. I was like, it's because we're supposed to come here as one. Mm -hmm. It was chill, bro. Remember that weird lady that was uh, that we bought the tokens from to get into? Oh place? yeah, when you bought, we, didn't, we bought. We didn't the, talk about this, but we we looked we, at each we, other and we were like, "We'll we, save that for." We later. had to wait until we had to wait until we got away from such a holy space, you know. <laughs> we can't we riff went, in the holy. Space. I can't. No, I couldn't riff around Jesus, bro. It's kind of like a no <laughs> riff zone. Believe it or not, there are places I won't riff, and it's in like a quiet, beautiful, ominous church. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, we walked in. That shit sounded like the Halo theme song, bro. I felt the Halo theme song radiating in my head. I was just like, "What's that? Uh, what's that? What's that meme of Willem Dafoe where he's just like, <laughs> that was me in the church, bro. That was me. That I was just, was. <laughs> I was just in the church. <laughs> just fucking." Just fucking crying, dude. You did. I, th I, I was like, just crying in like, the church. You know, like, it's, it's hard. We're on vacation. I'm like, yo, give me a second. I gotta go cry in this church. Yo, can we take a quick... Hey, brother, can we take a quick detour? I need to go cry in the church right quick. Look at Jesus got his... Jesus got my ass, dude. I was there crying, bro. I was wiping my eyes so fast. God, dude, I had just such a rough week, and I walked into that church, and it just made me feel like, all right, bro, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Hopefully the truck's worth a good chunk of change, and your boy can get out of it and get some new shit. Or I'd like to keep it, but I just feel like it's a ticking time bomb, bro. I don't want to fuck with it no more. Somebody wants to buy it from the junkyard or... Maybe I'll get it and I'll sell it to somebody for like five or six. I don't know. It's time though. It's time to it's bring time back to get me out of It's time to bring back me out of Mike. The resurrection. Sacrifice the truck for a little sports car. I like Portland a lot, dude. There's lots, lots of natural beauty. There's lots of curvy roads. I mean, just 
getting to that point of the church, like the little church exhibit thing we went to, you can walk into this like ominous like overlook. You can see so much from there, and there's like they have a brass Michelangelo statue, and Michelangelo there's like a uh, Saint Michael, Archangel. Mm. Somebody was a hey, dude. It was just. Beautiful statues, man. That shit was crazy. And then you can see everything from there. But yeah, bro. I don't know, man. I'm a... I like the free weed. <laughs> thank you for the thank for the smokage. I had to get you weed d- weed dr- uh, drinks after the... Taylor got me a bunch of weed beer after the airport nightmare, dude. That was a fucking fiasco indeed. Bro, we were, it's so funny about the plane, the flight getting delayed. I didn't really go into this, but there was this lady there that was like, she was going to be the voice of the terminal. She was like, the, <laughs> she was the voice of all of us. Like she was our representative. And she was like, they're like, thank you for your patience. Please let us know if you'd like to, if, if you need anything, please let us know if there's anything oh, we can help you with. Huh? They open the door. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. The lady goes, the lady goes, well, you, for for starters, you could put a plane right there. You could put a plane there. I think that would help us out a lot. <laughs> and I'm just like internally like, I have your neck pillow that you loaned me in San Francisco. Shout out to you for giving me that neck pillow, dude. Your boy was stoic as hell. In those, I was in the, I was just in the fucking airport. I was just in the airport, just like sunglasses on, hat forward, hoodie over, AirPods in. I was just like in a like airport sense deprivation tank i was just in my own like i want to start a company where you can that we sell we sell fucking helmets that just help you dissociate from wherever you're at completely like an ipad for your head just a whole and you're just in a different realm and nothing can affect you just a different level of vr where i'm talking like actual like it's 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 like a space helmet, but it's like you're at a beach or something, or you're doing just something completely else, or you're on a computer, and you're just like using your eyes to use. Hey, like, when are we gonna get that shit, dude? That'll fix every airport in America. Just put everyone in a fucking VR head, to put their head in a VR helmet, and make them sit, give them like a, give them like a McDonald's tube to suck McDonald's out of, and then a fucking <laughs> water tube, and you, the to chair, suck Mc, the like chair you, the chair you sit in is a toilet. <laughs> you're just, you're just at the airport, hooked into your, yo, they could your, really, they could really yeah, figure that fix toilet the air. seat. This they is how you figure fix. the toilet seat out first, so yeah, that we yeah, can shit without yeah. getting uh, walking over. Yeah, just fix the airport. Every Everyone gets put in a fucking VR helmet and like it's. You're trying not drugs. to fart on the nice young girl that's sitting next to you, blocking you. I don't from the understand bathroom. why an airport isn't sat like horizontally. I feel like you could fit more people in there if you just lay them on top of each other like corpses. You put a thousand people in on an airplane. <laughs> you just laid them horizontal, and everyone has a helmet on. Or just <laughs> we all wake up in a pile and slowly scooch out the back like this. Until everyone's out. All the fatties go on the bottom. They're the tertiary layer. A track trap door just opens. <laughs> a trap out. door <laughs> opens from the bottom of the airplane. <laughs> just the pile of clothes and fat people down there. You're like, oh, okay. We're here. It's like the piles of uh, hay and Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I gotta get some energy drinking me, man. These weed beers got me fucking... It's a chill pod, dude. We don't... Weed, weed beers got me fucking... Stuck. You don't owe nobody shit. I'm stuck off that. Uh, I'm stuck off the weed beers right now, bro. I'm just ready to get in that tub. On the page. If you're in Portland, this episode will drop the same weekend we're performing in it. So if you're here, come pull up to the Hawthorne Theater on Saturday. Doors be at 7, I believe. 8. 8. Doors be at 8. Hawthorne Theater in Portland, Oregon will be there this Saturday. If you're watching this right now, it is this weekend we're talking about right now. It's This is going to come out tomorrow, and then the show will be on the next day. This episode comes out on July 26th. The show is July 27th. What else did we do today that was cool? You yeah. got ice cream? Oh, yeah. I got some crazy liberal ice cream. <laughs> Some crazy they them ice cream on in fucking Portland. I was like, where's the they have all these fucking yuppie flavors in that motherfucker? I'm like, where's the cookies and cream? 
my fat Texan ass. Where's the goddamn cookies and cream? We've got lavender honey. I don't want your gay purple ice cream. I want some goddamn Oreo cookies crushed up in some Niller ice cream. <laughs> Yo, chill with the Niller ice cream. Give me some damn, give me two scoops of vanilla ice cream, boy. With the hard R. Vanilla <laughs> and black chocolate cookies. I want vanilla and black cookies all in my, all in my. <laughs> the liberal ice cream joint was and crazy. you did get the purple liberal ice cream. I though. did get the purple liberal ice cream. I got the fucking lavender. I was like, hell yeah, dude. This shit tastes like essential oils. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this ice cream tastes the way <laughs> my floor cleaner smells. It tastes like Bath and Body Works. This shit, fucking, fucking Bath and Body Works head ass ice cream, bro. Fucking Bed Bath and Beyond ice cream, dude. All right, yo, why are we always eating ice cream together? Bro, we stay eating cones, dude. There's something wrong with me, dude. <clears throat> I can never get in shape. I always succumb to the cone. Good God, I can hear the trees creaking out. This motherfucker, dude. I can see how you could, uh, I could, like, you're taking me all around the city, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I can see how Taylor could have a sweet little sheltered white boy life out here. I'm all jealous. I'm just like, God damn it, dude. You had, like, a group of friends that you played house shows with. I'm like, that's so, a loving, supporting dad. Fuck you, dude. (laughs) Look at all this stuff. We come visit your dad. He's got all this. She's got a dope-ass hot tub, and he's a good hang. We go to my dad's house. It's a fucking box in a retirement fucking community, and he calls me a faggot. (laughs) <laughs> and then we leave and we spend the drive back to your place. Like, he's like, Michael, you're you're fucking. You don't have to listen to your dad, bro. Your dad's miserable. <laughs> it's crazy. All my friends have rocking dads. Fucking love my dad. <laughs> Metalocalypse. My dad rules. Fucking love my dad. It's funny because he's the vocalist too. It's been cool have you seen having you here? Yeah, your family rules. Your dad's awesome. Your dad's a hoot. Your dad's a hoot. He's a riffmeister, dude. Oh, he riffs. Dude, you're He'll f- be a famous stand-up comedian dude, when he retires from his job. Fucking one day, dude. Your dad's got charisma. He's got good storytelling capabilities. He has stories to tell. Oh, so he many. has the perspective of a 50-year-old man. He's been around, seen a lot of shit. I can't... I can't wait to see what happens when we're in our 50s. I was trying to tell you. I was trying to tell you that... 2050 is 26 years away. <laughs> 20, bro, it's 2024, bro. In 26 years, it'll be 2050. <laughs> Welcome to the future. Welcome to the future. We eat ham cubes. <laughs> 3D printed ham cubes. <laughs> What's wrong, honey? You've barely touched any of your 3D printed lettuce. You must consume your sustenance. It's 2050. The earth is so hot. It's so hot outside. We've we've burrowed underground. <laughs> and we eat 3D printed meat. And and there are 74,000 genders. <laughs> Sexuality the human the human race can no longer reproduce. Everyone's transgender. <laughs> Everyone's 2050, bro. That's wild. What are you going to be doing when you're 50? What's 50 looking like for Mike, dude? You're going to have a few meals. I'm going to have a farm with a couple of robot horses. <laughs> you go to my house. You come to my, <laughs> what do they do? What do they do? You come to my house and I pull up on a cyborg horse. You're like, yep, all right, this should be Ridley Ranch. I think this is the place. It has, there's a giant metal gate with RR. <laughs> Ridley Ranch. Just two R's mirrored on top of this giant iron gate. It says RR. It looks like a Tim Burton ass gate. You go through the gate, and I'm like, I gallop up to you, and it's just, what? 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 What's up, dudes? I'm bald as shit. What's up, dudes? Hop in the wagon. I'll take you to the front door. You look like Jet Lee. Huh? You look like current Jet Li. Yeah, just old, just glasses. decrepit. Yeah, I've, I'm bald and I have a gray mustache and I have those little circle glasses. <laughs> and I'm on a cybernetic horse named Shadow. Named Shadow Light. Shadow Light, yeah. 
You guys are like, yo, Ridley's balling out, bro. He's got fucking robot horses. You'll be so like the funny. Kid Rock, the Filipino Kid Rock of Virginia. Yeah, Filipino Kid Rock, Kid Walk. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> kid Walk. <laughs> yeah. What's a fucking famous Kid Rock song? Uh, Bomb to Bomb, Bang to Bang, Diddy Diddy. <laughs> right? Isn't that his? <laughs> bomb Diggy Bomb to Bang. You know what I'm talking Bang Diggy Diggy. You know Yo, song? white people have culture, bro. I'm tired of people saying white people don't have culture. If white people don't have culture, then explain Bomb Diggy Bomb to Bang to Bang. Bro, that is. Okay, Kid Rock songs. Oh, uh, I saw your picture. I saw your picture. I saw your picture today. <laughs> Kid Walk. I saw your picture. And the, literally, it's Ba with a Ba. It's ba de B-A-W-I-T-D-A-B-A. B-A-W-I-T-D-A-B-A is how you spell that song. That's crazy. My man just made a redneck scat song. <laughs> Skibidi boo bop 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 bop. He's just Cowboys, is his other song. I don't know how that one goes. I'm a cowboy, baby. Mm. That's going to be me on the cybernetic horse, bro. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm a cowboy. Try to think of what other, like, Bro, I just don't know what 2050 will hold, man. I don't know what it will hold. We don't even know if we're going to live that long. You could die before 2050. You can die before damn kids with your hoverboards and your fucking damn UBI, kids. your universal, what is it? Basic income. Yeah, your goddamn universal basic income. You're goddamn... Back in my day, we worked for our money. We just didn't get a fat check from our ominous authoritarian government. <laughs> <laughs> just robots take over everything and just... Uh, life is pure and amazing and like we're just like bitter boomers about it. What do you mean the government provides you housing? <laughs> Ever since the robots t- took over, kids these days just don't know how to work. Yeah, we're not supposed to work. At least what they call work. We're not supposed to sit in an office for fucking 12 hours a day pretending to work. Create. We're supposed to have a whole community of dudes putting up a house. We're supposed to be Amish. We're supposed to be Amish, bro. We're supposed to be milking fucking cybernetic cows and... <laughs> What? Plowing fiber optic hay and setting up Wi-Fi towers on our farm. Mining Bitcoin on our internet farm. You know, it's just we're just living in this this new era of traditionalism that's coinciding with technology. And I don't know how to cope with that. I don't know what 2050 is going to be like, bro. But I will know that I will be 50-something years old. Yeah, I'll be 50. Whoa. I turned 30 years old and... Whoa. 2023, I turned 30, bro. Time is going by fast as fuck. Because you're like... We're, we're going through your, like, childhood shit. Like, driving around your childhood neighborhood and shit. And everything's different and the world's moving on. And it's like... You know what I'm saying? fucking bro wait till i show you my hometown you're gonna be like what the fuck (laughs) newport news is a dump bro it's a giant shopping mall the whole thing is just a series of shopping centers and pharmacies and gas stations and then a big old jail at the end of the street (laughs) it's like a bunch of shopping centers and shit and then you get to the very end of newport news and there's a courthouse and a jail it's like a thermometer of shit is it on the water yeah It's on a peninsula, so it's like a nightmare. Like, driving around here is a nightmare. Mm. Because you have to deal with geography. And a freeway everybody wants to get on because nobody's from here. They don't know the back roads and shit. They take the freeway everywhere because Google tells them to. Damn, bro. I knew you had a rambunctious-ass childhood in in these motherfucking forests. You know what we used to do? We used to fucking... Dude, my friend set a bamboo forest on fire when I was a kid. We had a bamboo forest in our neighborhood. I think they were playing with fireworks in it. The whole thing burned down. 
It was like this surreal bamboo forest in just the middle random patch in Yorktown, Virginia, where I'm from. We would just smoke blunts in the fucking bamboo, in the bamboo forest, bro, and it was just a dense-ass bamboo forest that caught on fire. Like, yo, that was so bad when that happened, dude. They shut the road down. They had fire trucks. I wasn't there that day, but people I knew were there. That was like some fucking uh, butterfly effect shit. Not the Travis Scott song, the movie. This whole town looks like the butterfly effect. All the houses and shit. It's got like this small town feel to it. There was a kid a couple years ago that uh, burnt down hundreds of acres of a natural forest with a smoke bomb that he threw into for funsies. And they were hiking at Eagle Creek, I think, right? And he threw like a smoke bomb or something and it burned down like hundreds of acres of the forest for, for days. And then like everybody was trying to they were threatening to kill this kid once his name got out and like trying to dox him and then they were like he got like I think he went to he was like underage so he didn't go to jail right yeah they (coughs) fined him like an unpayable amount of money and he has to make like $80 payments for the rest of his life or whatever you know damn bro you in you in debt to the forest (laughs) since when do trees need money (laughs) I want to know what these trees doing with my man's $80 a month. <laughs> you just walk through a forest in Portland, you see a tree with like a fucking bulldog and a fucking gold chain and a white BMW. You're like, what are these trees doing? How are these trees living better than me? Huh? Oh, they're getting tree benefits. Even the trees are getting benefits. My, That's crazy, bro. Who's paying? Who's paying for the trees? You can't. You can't fix that shit, dog. Bro, that's gross, bro. Starting a forest fire is gay. <laughs> forest fires are gay, dude. <laughs> dude, if you don't care about the environment, you're gay, bro. So I do like about Oregon, bro. It's beautiful and green. There's not as much trash as there is. I, I figured there'd be more homeless people and more trash, but it seems like they figured out that Austin is a good place for homeless people. <laughs> I wonder if any Portland homeless people are like, I heard it doesn't rain in Texas. <laughs> it's like, Heard it's dry. Tent, the inside of your tent won't be all musty and dank. There's homeless people out here in Portland, they get trench foot. They get fucking, <laughs> they're, they're at the CVS like, you got anything that treats trench foot? I'm going <laughs> to steal it and you're going to let me because we're in a liberal city. <laughs> Can I, I'm just going to, if you haven't locked it up. <laughs> I remember, we, what did we go to, CVS or? Target. We went to Target, everything was like, you know, plastic, everything was locked. I was like, good God. The shampoo. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I saw a Black Lives Matter sign on a guy's yard. I was like, yeah. It's like four. I saw four black people today. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty white place. This place it's crazy white. It's cra- This is like the whitest shit I've ever seen in my life. They had a Filipino shrine, though. That ruled. That did rule. Of all, of all shrines to have, a Filipino shrine just randomly in this... Locked away secret area of Portland that we went to. And there was only Indians there. It's weird. They're like, oh, look at them. They're wrong. They're wrong. <laughs> this is all bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> Looking around, the Indian names. <laughs> Whatever. What are they? What's an Indian? I can't. I'm Hindu? so high. I can't even think of it. Hindu is one, right? Hindu? Hindi? Hinduism? Hinduism? Yeah. This is all wrong, man. Fucking... Judgmental Indian dudes and a Christian monument. This is fucking. It's just scoffing at fucking it. Fucking ten dollars, man. Ten dollars. Charge us ten dollars for this shit. For lies. Fucking ten dollars, man. You're wrong. <laughs> the lady who charged us to go into the uh, into the grotto, into the little the Jesus exhibit. She was very robotic. <laughs> she might have been the first AI, like the like an animatron. She was weird. She was. She was very like. So you'll take the token. They gave us these tokens. Take your take your token to the turnstile and go up the elevator. Enjoy. <laughs> I was like, why was she doing that? She was it's like sparks coming out of her neck. She was like, <laughs> pff, pff. She's just a cy- just a cybernetic ticket booth lady. Just 
some guy walks out of her room. He's like, my bad, dude. One second. He opens her panel. She's just, she's got a panel on her neck. He's just, guy's like, yeah, this thing's fucking up all the time. You can tap your debit card right here. <laughs> Lady was, she broke script for a second. You got her to break her script. What did I say? I can't remember, but she like snapped out of it and was like a person for a second. And then when it came back to ringing us up, she like fucking, it was crazy. <laughs> That shit scared me, dude. It kind of made me feel like this was culty or something. Like that, she kind of felt like a hostage. Like she was working there because she had to. Like she wasn't allowed to leave. She definitely looked like a, like an anime girl. Like she reads man- manga. Mm-hmm. And has multiple cats. House just smelled like cat piss. She did, uh, I didn't peg her to be a woman of the Lord. A woman of God. Right. She didn't give me those vibes that she was a woman of God. Yeah. I don't know. Well, there's a there's a, something in the Bible that says you probably shouldn't do that, Taylor. So, I don't know. I'd quote it if I was a better Christian. What do you mean that I shouldn't stay? Casting judgment. judgment. Oh, sorry. Questioning someone else's Fuck. relationship with the Lord, brother. That's I think See, that's I'm not. So, I think I'm, that's somewhere in there. I'm bad at this Jesus stuff, dude. I'm not, I'm not used to new to it. I'm learning. Here's the thing. You can't be bad at Jesus, bro, because we're all learning. It's like skateboarding. It's at your own pace. I'm bad at Jesus. And I'm a it's poser. Crazy. I'm just mall-grabbing Christianity. I'm like, yeah, dude. Trying to, I don't know, man. I felt something special for sure. I've been trying to be more honest with myself and try to be more honest when God tries to talk to me, you know. He's definitely, we've definitely been having a couple of chats with the last week that I've had. I was in the airport just going, I know, dude. Yep, I deserve to be here. I deserve to be in this airport. <clears throat> Eating $15 sandwiches. This fucking lady, man, in the terminal, the, oh, yeah. the voice of the terminal, that shit was so funny, dude. <laughs> they brought out the snacks. Big ass thing of snacks like cookies and fucking fruit snacks and fucking sweet and salty nut granola bars. Nature Valley sweet and salty nut. While you were waiting? <sighs> Bro, they the whipped out the Nature Valley, the <laughs> chewy Nature Valley sweet and sour nut. Mm-hmm. Sweet and salty nut, I mean. You guys know. Oh, yeah, the, with the peanut butter bottom. The Ooh, yeah. It's like, a, glaze it's on like an almond chocolate bar, basically, with mm-hmm. no chocolate. Incredible. Wait, they them. gave you snacks? Like... Because they were They pulled out a whole united cart of snacks, and I watched an entire terminal of disgruntled people just go, Ooh, a little snack. (laughs) This should hold me over. I am a little peckish. I have been waiting six hours. I guess I could wait another six, honestly, after you brought these cookies out. Ooh, some Welch's fruit snacks. Don't mind if I do. It's funny because it's kind of like being trapped on an island with somebody post-plane crash, but it's like before the plane ever takes off. You know what I mean? It's almost worse. Yeah, it's almost... (laughs) Well, I'm grateful. I was like, dude, I cannot be stuck on an island with this lady. We'd eat her first. So, hey, guys, I know that there's plenty of food, but we should probably just eat this lady. She stops her. Man, it would suck if, like, I told her to go shake that tree to get those coconuts out, and the coconut just bonked her on her head. What did she, what did she say? What else did she say Bro, besides yeah, the plane that, there? Like, uh, there she saw plane. another plane. She saw another plane turning in, and she was like, turn your turn signal on. Come here. She's, like, talking through the glass and shit. <laughs> Yeah, what she's, like, psycho. staring out a window, like, yelling at an airplane to come pull into That's our gate. insane. I was like, bro, lady, shut the fuck up. Like, I wanted, yeah, you guys are like, oh, Ridley, why would you want a coconut to fall on her head? That's pretty brutal, dude. I'm like, no, this lady was being hella cringe and annoying. <laughs> I'd love a plane right here. We've been here for hours. Like, if you needed a middle-aged, annoying white woman to announce all your inner frustrations, that's what she was doing. But in, like, the... It was... Her complaining was, like, a message to me to stop complaining. I was like, this is destroying this lady. And look at you. You're just fucking... (laughs) I was just (laughs) stoic in my chair while this lady's bitching. I'm like... (laughs) You played some Overwatch? I did play... (laughs) Yeah, I didn't play... I kept thinking that the plane was about to board anytime soon, and then uh, I would play some Overwatch, I'd lose, and then I would close it up, pack everything back up. This is like a 15-minute process, unpacking my gaming laptop. Bro, I look like an asshole to some people. Like, laptop, charger, $200 PlayStation 5 controller in its own case. I have to take it out, get the, get the cord for that, hook that into the laptop, take the headphones that you're using, plug them into the controller, connect to the internet, and I'm in the game. You're screaming, healer, healer. <clears throat> you're screaming. Yeah, there is something crazy about suffering in a fucking terminal while you're losing Overwatch. I'm just like, <laughs> D- 
damn, it's worse because I'm in an airport. I'm not even, like, winning. So people are walking by me and, like, oh, this guy sucks at Overwatch. <laughs> people can see me losing on Overwatch if you stuck around and... This guy really doesn't know how to play tank. What a fucking idiot. He's just rushing in there. Well, I'm going to go catch my flight. Hey, dude, you're fucking trash. <laughs> he comes up to me. Yeah. I like listening to them trees crack. I hope the mic can pick those up. I don't know if it will. There might be a little. Probably not. I hope we can pick up these birds chirping. Is that, that might be on there. It's a nature episode. It is a nature episode. It's a nature episode. What was it, Radio Ridley on the Road? This is our first episode. This is a radio, road. yeah, it's ra- radio, radio Ridley Raw on the Road. Yeah. Uh, radio. R- R4. It's the Art of Fourth <laughs> Power. Yeah. <clears throat> radio Ridley Raw on the Road. Pretty badass. It's Radio Ridley Raw on the Road. With Chink and the Chode coming to you live. <laughs> Am I the chode? I guess you are. I'm chink. <laughs> I mean, you could. I could be either or. I could be chink or chode, but you can only be one of those things. You can only be chode. I could be chink or chode. It's Damn chink. It. On, it's it. chink and chode on Radio Ridley Raw on the Road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this thing's kicking in. Yeah, it's like negating the weed beer. Just I'm like time. waking up. Yeah. Just in I've time been fucking it. dude. I, I've been in a coma. Yeah. I've been in a fucking edgeable coma. Shout out Natural Wonders. Dude, shout out Natty Wonders, dude. I've been on an, on an edging streak this whole time My I've been here. My boy Jackson. I've been on an edgeable streak. Yeah. Gone off the edibles. It's incredible. Feeling good. Give me a, give me a edibles. Asian edibles action Bronson. I'm in the back seat of an ice luge eating edibles. It's incredible. Delectable. Macadamia nut cookie, 40 milligrams. Each one of my hands. I take a bite while I dance. <laughs> With my hands in his pants. <laughs> has to be gay. <laughs> always becomes gay. It always becomes gay. Gay Asian action you, Bronson. He's you, just Asian. You almost made it like five bars without me going gay, but you had to in the very yeah. <laughs> Got a 40 milligram macadamia nut cookie in each one of my hands. Take a bite while I dance with my hand in his pants. <laughs> Reaching for his dick in his pants. <laughs> I'm gay because I prance. Dude, Action Bronson is going to be so pissed at me when he finds out. Oh, bro, it's a pleasure to meet you. But I've seen all those videos and they make me want to beat you. <laughs> He like spells, like, he's like rapping at me. Like he's like that. rapping at me. He's like, "Hey, brother, you really, you really annoyed me with that shit. You were making me gay and shit." I was like, "Aren't you gay?" <laughs> Action Bronson, aren't you gay, dude? I'm pretty sure. You always rapping about BLTs and shit. <laughs> Artisan bread and shit. If you give a fuck about artisan bread, that's kind of gay, fellas. Is it like, is it gay to like artisan bread? <laughs> yes. The way Action Bronson just like rubs his nipples on TV, they're they're getting dank ass food, and he's like, "Oh, it's incredible! Oh my God, the, look at the delectable juices dripping <laughs> off that meat." Is that what he does? You could just see the moisture permeating through the sinew and all the yeah yeah. He talks like that. It's very zesty when he describes <laughs> the food. He's like, "This it's it's just it's melting in my mouth." Pause. This is. Send my regards to the chef. This is the best shrimp po' boy I've ever had. <laughs> Send my regards to the chef. This is the most delectable spam masubis I've ever eaten. I've never eaten 17 spam masubis in one sitting. <laughs> Action Bronson just going to town on some masubis. The teriyaki sauce drips off his balls. <laughs> I hope he sees this one day and doesn't hate us and wants to come on the podcast and then you guys can do he can try to do your impression of himself that'd be really funny if I just if I just did an action Bronson impression for action Bronson you should do it on like a beat like his beats like those old school New York beats we'll find one yeah you, you already know it's, it's Radio Ridley I'm sipping on Moscato with a juice medley <laughs> fucking <laughs> I don't know dude the name weed beers we're just riffing at this point. They got point. a hold on me. What? So we're just, you're just riffing at this point. Yeah. 
That's what's what the doing. timer at? Where are we at on time? I, <coughs> I can't remember the time I announced the episode. I was so high. Uh, 40 minutes. Hmm? So we keep going for five and then get in the hot, get in the hot tub? Yeah. You guys, uh... If you guys are enjoying the outdoor setting of the pod, let me know. I've been always, uh, somebody I like a lot, uh, James McCann, he does his in his car and it makes it so like, he has his camera outside of his car, but he's got his audio coming from inside of the car. So it's really fun to watch. And I was like, man, I want to tweak with like recording in different places after I saw that. I was like, bro, you could literally record anywhere you want. I literally walked up a set of wooden stairs and said hello to you guys. I think that was a pretty cool feature of it. <laughs> I think that was a cool feature of just, like, using the environment. That was low-key kind of creative, Shun. I put the mic all close to the stairs. Uh, like in the comment below if you caught me doing that, the audio engineering of that, where I had the mic, like... I didn't... I don't know. I, I was I taking footsteps and shit. You could hear the the... The wooden steps creak as I came up. It's very audiobookish. I'm trying to find our Patreon subscribers so we can shout them out. Give them a shout out, dude. We're still learning how it works. But thank you to everyone who subbed to the Patreon. That really makes me feel good. If you got that $20 tier, go ahead and shoot us a DM of uh, your size and Addy, or I'll get you a uh, promo code for the. uh, you a promo code for the web store you can pop that in there and put your address there and i'll ship it that way and we are they actually have to give us their address when they sign up for that tier so we already have their address we just oh, need cool. and i've been messaging them asking for their size there we go yeah. but uh just for we are 70k in the hole so you brought all the t-shirts to the metal show so we're gonna try to hustle as many metal show shirts as we yeah. can and well, if we only run there's... out we'll get more and give you guys a shirt yeah, there's a limited number of the radio Ridley. Well, the the Giga my, Sweat tea. The Giga Sweat T is very limited. The Wang's World v- version one. It's a very limited run of shirts, bro. If you have that shirt, bro, let's say in 2050 you come to one of my shows and you have that shirt, you're coming, dude. You just show box office that shirt. I'll have a photo. If anyone comes to this show, if anyone comes to this show wearing this shirt, you let them in. VIP. You give them a VIP wristband. Oh shit, son. You got five members. I can't find the fifth one. I don't know where the fifth member is. It's only showing us... It might only show us the paid ones. No, I don't see here. Well, I'm going to give a big shout out to James. He's a giga sweat boy. Shout out to Austin. I know who you are, Austin. This is my buddy that I grew up with. Nice. Very good friend of mine. He was at my wedding, bro. He brought me some vape juice as a parting gift of my wedding. (laughs) Solid Nice. Solid gift to give to someone at a fucking... And my flavor. And my nicotine strength. That's how you know he's your boy, bro. Damn. He brought me the juice. I don't miss that. What, dripping the juice? Yeah, it was crazy. You're like walking around in public with a fucking tall boy soda can of vape juice attached to your wrist. <laughs> You're just smoking a pipe bomb in front of all these people. You're looking <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Yeah, now, like, when you see somebody that isn't using a disposable vape, you're like, <laughs> fucking grandpa. Like, that's crazy how the traditional vape that we all grew up and learned to hate is, like, this generation's, like, pipe and tobacco. <laughs> you see a guy opening up a small metal suitcase, and there's, like, several vape accessories, like, four bottles of juice, a couple of 18650 batteries in there, <laughs> a fucking... A vape that's fully disassembled. He's like unzipping his Yeah, he puts it together like a sniper rifle of an assassin. (laughs) Takes it out of an attache case and starts assembling his vape device in front of you. And then he goes, this is Baja Blast. You want to try it? (laughs) This is an aged Baja Blast. 2012. Good year. Good year for Baja Blast vape juice. 2012. Or... Maybe 2013, 2014. Early vaping. Did you know that vapes were invented by Filipinos? No. Yeah. Filipino guys made those first, like, cloud competitions and shit. Like, those cloud Mm -hmm. comp vapes. They were making, they were called mechanical vapes. Mm. You had mechanical. It was a mechanical mod. It was literally just a spring and a battery and some (laughs) screw posts at the tip of it, dude. Yeah, it was dangerous. above fat clouds. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Big clouds. 
you're blowing such a big cloud. You're Goodness. going to win the you're going to win the cloud competition, the Manila cloud competition, the annual Manila Plume vaping champ. vaping competition, blowing big clouds in the Manila vaping competition. We have it every year. Blowing big. <clears throat> what are the flavors this year? Filipino, f <laughs> just everything's mango. Mango, um, uh, beef, <laughs> beef flavored vapes, <laughs> vinegar, lots of vinegar in a Filipino vape. <laughs> Fucking high as shit, man. Texas does need to get weed stores, though, bro. Yeah. Could you imagine a Texas-sized edible, just a gummy that's just in the shape of Texas? <laughs> Fucking 4,000 milligram edible. H-E-B edibles would go crazy. There's, there's a there's a hundred milligrams in the panhandle alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go over to the Patreon. All right. It's 45 Patre minutes. Let's do We're going right. to get in the hot tub, go to the Patreon. I'm going to soak the my, shout outs real quick. Soak my feet in a hot teasy. Dude, Nick, I saw that you upgraded from $1 to $5. Wise choice, my friend. Thank you so much. Charles B. Shout out Charles B. And then the fifth member. We don't know how to use... Um, we don't know how to use Patreon accurately yet. We don't know. It just shows me the last four new members. Zero canceled members in the last 30 days. Thank you guys for holding out. We're going to put some shit we up there. Get, we don't get this out tomorrow, then they're, they're going to cancel. All five of them are going to cancel. So that's why we're As doing this for you, boys. Real gorilla podcasting right now. We're crushing it. That's Sarah chilling in an orb. Taylor's girlfriend off camera right now, just sitting in an orb chair, just floating in stasis. <laughs> I have yeah. fucking Taylor's dad in my right ear munching on some crucial dinner. He's got a t he's got a fucking dinner table foldy thing for your like when you sit down. It rules. He's in his own world right now. He doesn't know if he should talk, so he's just <laughs> looking at me and smiling and waving. He's got some slides on his. Crusty little dogs that's are how, out. That's how supportive Chris is, dude. That's I fucking, how dude, your my dad, dad rules. Is. We were already talking good about you, dude. We were like, I was like, damn, bro. I was talking about your ch childhood had to rule here, bro. This is mm. such a. I got lucky with you. You lived a fucking Goonie Sandlot esque childhood. <laughs> it was yeah. like, oh, our balls over the fence type ass childhood. And I, st and I still. <laughs> my ball <laughs> went into Miss. <laughs> My ball went to Mr. Goldstein's yard. He's going to kill us. Why is he a Jew? Because it's Portland. <laughs> <laughs> you have a fucking crotchety Jewish neighbor as a kid. That was your that was your mortal childhood enemy, was your crotchety Jewish neighbor, Mr. Goldstein. He's a fucking dick. The kids are at it again. I told you, no more sidewalk chalk out front of my house, <laughs> god damn it. No more sidewalk chalk out front of my house, god damn it. One of these... One of these bastard kids keep drawing swastikas in my driveway. My grandparents didn't suffer for this shit. We didn't leave New York to come to, to, to Portland to deal with this kind of nonsense. My grandpa has tattoos on his wrists, goddammit. No more sidewalk chalk. <laughs> All right, let's switch over to the Patreon. All right. Right, was your final you. free riff was the angry Jewish neighbor that, that I was, was good value. Was a pretty was good, good one. Value. That was a pretty good. Yeah, we're gonna go on to the Patreon. Just soak my. <laughs> Are you gonna go soak. in with your shirt with your shirt off? No, I'm not going shirtless in the fucking. Or I mean, were you gonna go in the pool with your shirt on in the hot tub? Pool with the shirt on. Yeah, I'll just have the mic just in the pool. Go get your car. I'm gonna, hard I'm gonna wear my shoes. <laughs> I'm gonna wear my shoes in the hot tub, just fucking standing in it, fully dressed. All right. All right, guys. We're gonna head over to the Patreon. Um, let me know if you like the uh, if you want to see the pod randomly recorded in a different setting. I think that would be fun. <clears throat> Come see us tomorrow, Saturday, July seventh. Bystander Michael. July Ridley. twenty seventh, eight p.m. at the Hawthorne Theater. The Hawthorne. You went the Irish fucking Hawthorne. Me. See the boys play at the Hawthorne Theater in Portland, Oregon. July twenty seventh, eight p.m. Doors are tight. Grab a beer. Poke a girl with blue hair in the eye in the mosh pit. Say oopsie daisy as you do it, lad. Boink!
<laughs> just poke a chicken. <laughs> it's terrible. Oh, that's the worst. That happened to me in my yeah. first mosh pit. I saw Mike. It happened to you last week. Yeah, I was in a mosh pit. Yeah, I got my eye poked in the pit last week, dude. All right, bye. I love you.